I want to talk about the Democrats' secret weapon. It's this guy named Boris. You're in the Trump campaign war room. Mm -hmm. Boris, what is the war room? What happens in this room? We're watching all the news. We're monitoring everything that's going on. We're having fun. We're calling out people's random names. There's this guy, his name's Andy Sarabian. Sarabies! We call him out. <laughs> Subpoena this very week. Uh, so this is pretty newsworthy, your response to all of that. First of all, thank you for being here as well, sir. Thanks so much, Ari. Uh, my response has been public. I'm happy to share all of the information about the overwhelming amount of fraud that happened in the 2020 election in Arizona, in Wisconsin, and Georgia, and Pennsylvania. He's a fucking idiot. He had to resign from the White House just 60 days into Trump's administration because he's a fucking idiot. And, you know, probably a Russian spy. Crazy. When you say you will provide evidence, does that mean your intent is to cooperate, to provide testimony to this committee? Or my statement stands for itself. I'm happy to provide evidence of the overwhelming fraud that happened in the 2020 election to you, to the committee, to Democrats, to rhinos, to anybody out there. This election was stolen from President Trump. President Trump won the 2020 election. He's continued to work for Trump this whole time. You see, he used to work for Sinclair Communications. So in the, in the vein of that false claim, I want to show you some of what you... False and, according to you. Well, the Supreme Court, the results, you're aware that the no, President the Biden Court, is oh, in the White oh, House. But, not, but Boris, let's go one at a time. Your audience is a smart audience. Let's go Don't one at a time. Your audience. I want to the show Supreme you on the war room, on Boris, evidence. with Steve Bannon. This was in the run-up. Let's do it. The Vice President's got a lot of power, and that's very important to recognize. That's a huge deal. Repeat that to the audience. I'll make sure everybody understands this. you got the buried lead right there. The Vice President has a ton of power in terms of opening and counting the Electoral, uh, the electoral College votes at the George session on the 6th. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. Just understand this. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. It's going to be moving. It's going to be quick. Actually, I'm on record as soon as I saw the events at the Capitol of tweeting that any and all violence needs to stop. I'm on record. You, do you remember what time you tweeted that since you brought it up? I think it was around, in the, uh, I believe it was in the 2 o'clock hour. It's about 2.30, so it was a bit into it, but go ahead. Well, there you, well, there you go, Harry. I guess, why, why'd you have to ask if you already knew? But thank you. And just like Fox News, you know, straight down the middle. President Trump gave his long-awaited State of the Union address earlier this week. I caught up with Kimberly Guilfoyle. So many things in terms of the accomplishments. How could you not stand and applaud and clap? Here's the bottom line. I do not think that there is another politician in America who could have gotten both sides of the aisle to stand and cheer like President Trump did at his State of the Union address. Based on the 83,000 unlawful ballots in Maricopa County in Arizona, the 200,000 unlawful ballots in Wisconsin, the tens of thousands of unlawful ballots in Georgia, and the same in Pennsylvania, I believe the lawful results are that President Trump won the 2020 election. In terms of January 6th, the events actually inside the Capitol, the process, according to the Electoral Count Act, there was absolutely a plan and a process for there to be uh, to, to be challenges right. to the electoral so count you, votes. Just, is that, is that a yes? Can I, can, is that a yes? No. That's a, that's a, you asked me a question. I'm answering the question. That, that, that's a, a yes. So this is important because we may run down this in a future election. That's a yes that you I'm thought. Answering, Ari, know, I'm answering. I'm answering. I'm going to go back with you. You're going to get time, Boris. But that is a yes that what Navarro and Bannon are talking about that you would use the so-called electoral count act and other methods. What do you mean would, so-called? It's an act. It's would so-called. That's would what be it's called. Would be to then try to have the House declare Trump the winner. Is that correct? Under the Electoral Count Act that was passed in, in the 1800s, after the election of 1876, the count was passed in, the 18, in 1886, the Electoral Count Act lays out a process to challenge electoral votes. Okay. There was a process that was undertaken. And you're on record and there were so you, Would you be open that, to doing that, 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 in, a future, that place. in a future election if Donald Trump were to run again? I'm on record saying that I believe for the vice president to have a very significant role in that process. He now is advising Trump on what to do legally with all this mumbo jumbo that Trump's got himself caught up in. I think he's our ace in the hole. Because like I said, this guy's a fucking idiot. There, there's also been reporting about the attempt to seat uh, fraudulent electors. Um, is that something you ever worked on or would support, for example, in Michigan? That's so funny. It's not fraudulent electors, Ari. It's alternate electors. Kerry gave 
alternative facts to that. But the point remains wait, wait. Alternative that there facts? is... This is uh, sure. Chairman Maddox, right quote, we fought to seat the electors. The Trump campaign asked us to do that. Uh, did you ever make calls like that uh, regarding what you're calling these alternate electors? I was quoted in the Washington Post in the last 24 hours. Yes, I was part of the process to make sure there were alternate electors for when, as we hoped, the challenges to the seated electors would be heard. Your view, just, just for the record here, is that you could, as a lawyer to the Trump campaign, seat these electors in states where the process, the state results, as overseen by the independent courts, as approved by the Supreme Court, found that Biden won. And you would put in what you call the alternate... Supreme Court. Yeah, what you would... Hold on, let me finish the question, and you can go ahead. And you would then support putting in these alternate, or others call them fraudulent electors. You support that. You don't see any chance there that that could be against the law, Boris? It is absolutely not against law. It is actually according to the law. The Supreme Court absolutely never ruled on the merits but as you know, of the Boris, overwhelming yes, fraud that happened in 2020. As you know, the cases were so weak, they never reached the merits. It's not like Bush v. Gore, where they had the full case. They didn't even see, and that included many Trump-appointed justices, a reason to even go it was there. A different makeup. It was a different makeup of the court. Certain justices, like Clarence Thomas, disagreed and said they should have taken it up. And more and more information is coming out every day out of Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. I mean, this yeah, there's information in coming out. Let me, let me ask it like this. Of course, well. you also understand that there are open probes, including in Georgia, that prosecutors might look at it differently. You understand that if you are aiding and abetting the seating of fraudulent electors or voter fraud, that not only is that potentially against the law, but then you also would lose the lawyer-client privilege under the crime fraud exception for your, for your client, <laughs> the Trump campaign. First of all, I don't think that you are the one that's going to be determining, or your audience, whether there was any perpetration of fraud. I will tell you that the perpetration of fraud was absolutely done, and it was done by the Democrats, it was done by the left, by Mark Elias and others. And that you know, because Trump's basically a puppet of the, what do they call it, the deep state? Oh, well. Hey, if we're not paying Boris Epstein, we should consider doing it, Democrats, because this guy is running Trump's house into a hole. I love it. It's fun to watch. Hey, man. Sit back and enjoy. I'm Zachariah, Lone Star Liberal. Vice Star, our press secretary gave alternative facts to that, but the point remains... Wait a minute. Alternative that facts?